Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which 15 inch laptop computer should you buy? I have four different laptop computers on the desk ranging from $350 to $550. I've previously reviewed these computers. Links in the video description below to that as well as links to Amazon and Newegg so you can check out their current prices because prices change all the time. This video is here to help you figure out what in the world should I buy. It's very easy to get confused looking at specs and product sheets and, and performance numbers and go, what do I really need? Can I get away with a $350 computer? Should I spend the $550? Are any of these appropriate for what you want to do with a computer? I'm here to answer that in this video. Now, as I said before, these are each individually reviewed in the links below. Those are actually playlists to a whole series of videos I've done on each computer. Please go check them out if you'd like to know more about any individual machine. Let me first talk about what's the same between these computers. They're all about five pounds. They all have three to five hours of battery life. They all have 15 inch full HD 1080p screens. They all have two core, four thread Intel processors ranging from 2.4 gigahertz on the bottom end up to 3.1 on the top end. Performance is very similar between the machines. Don't get excited about the clock speed differences. It's there, but we're talking 10 to 20% difference. They all have webcams. They all have SD memory card readers. They all have DVD readers and writers, so they'll all play DVDs. They'll all um, read and write CDs and read and write DVDs. They all have HDMI out ports to plug in an external monitor or an external projector. They all have numeric keypads on the keyboard in addition to the standard keyboard. The keyboards are all very, very similar. Don't get excited about the differences. They're all chiclet style, low uh, travel keys. They don't travel very far. They work. I prefer external keyboards myself, but for short durations, they work. They all have trackpads in the front with two buttons. They're very, very similar machines. So the question becomes, what do you get for $350, $460, $530, or $550 respectively? Now let's talk about the differences. That's really what this is about. What do you get when you step up in price? Is it worth it? Is it a deal? Well, that depends on what you're going to buy a laptop for because your use case may necessitate spending more money or it may not be worth it and you should buy the less expensive computer. Let me start off with the budget option, $350. Very nice computer, Acer Aspire E15. Now that computer comes with four gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive, no solid state drive. Its performance is good enough. If you are just browsing the web, watching YouTube videos such as this, if you just want to play casual games such as League of Legends, if you want to run Minecraft on it, that computer will actually do it just fine. I do recommend that you spend $30 and upgrade the RAM to eight gigabytes. It'll improve the performance of the machine. It'll improve multitasking. You don't have to, but it's nice. And for $350, that is an incredible value for the money. It's a lot of computer at that price point. What do you get for your money if you step up from the $350 Acer to the $460 HP 15-inch notebook? Well, primarily you get two things. The first is this already has eight gigabytes of RAM in it. It's $110 more, but it has the $30 RAM upgrade in it. So if you are planning on upgrading the RAM on this one, that really makes that laptop 380, which reduces the price difference. The other thing the HP has is an i5 processor instead of an i3. Still a two core chip, not a huge difference. However, it runs it up to 2.8 gigahertz versus the 2.4 on the Acer. Is that a big difference? It's about a 10% performance difference. I personally think it's very, very minor. The deal between these two laptops, in my opinion, is the Acer. For $350 or 380 with the RAM, that is a really compelling argument for a basic laptop that is just going to edit um, Microsoft Office documents, browse the web, watch videos, and play very casual games. The HP is nice, but it's a lot of money to spend to have the RAM pre-installed and to get 10% more CPU power. Now you do have the option to spend a little bit more, 460 to 530 for the ASUS 15-inch laptop. What do you get when you step just above the $500 price point to $530? Well, you get a couple of things. First of all, 
This does not have a hard drive in it. It has a solid state drive, yay! Solid state drives, if you're not familiar with them, are massive improvements over hard drives. It's smaller at only 256 gigabytes, but for the average user, that actually may be enough. It is much quicker. Turning the computer on, shutting it down, launching programs, switching between programs, everything is much, much faster because of the solid state drive. Now this also has eight gigabytes of RAM, but it has the new seventh generation processor i5 from Intel, 3.1 gigahertz instead of 2.8 or 2.4. That's another 10% performance improvement over the HP or about a 20% performance improvement over the Acer. But it is more expensive at $530. Now you can upgrade this laptop to 16 gigabytes of RAM, a little expensive at the moment, you're going to spend about uh, $60, $65 doing it, but you can if you do a lot of multitasking or run a lot of programs at the same time. While it has a solid state drive, it does not have a place to add a hard drive inside. So you have to be okay with the 256 gigabytes of storage that it comes with. If you want the option to add more storage, spend $20 more and come to this end of the table. For $550, this is an Acer Aspire E15 laptop computer. That's an Acer Aspire E15 laptop computer. They're actually the same machine except different models. They have different CPUs. This has an i5, that has an i3. This has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive just like the Asus does, but it has an open two and a half inch drive bay to add a hard drive or a second solid state drive if you want to expand the storage. Please note, there is a hard drive caddy to hold the drive that does not come in the laptop that you have to buy from Acer. It's $8. There will be a link in my review of this laptop in the video description where you can go to, Asus, uh, to Acer's support website and buy the caddy. So if you want to install the drive, be sure to order the caddy from Acer. It's just a piece of plastic, but it keeps it from rattling around inside. This can also be upgraded to 16 gigabytes of RAM if you want to. And most notably, it has a very important feature that these three laptops don't. Dedicated gaming graphics chip. This has NVIDIA's GeForce GT 940MX graphics chip. Two gigabytes of GDDR5 dedicated video RAM, and it's the 512 shader version of the chip. This is a very important distinction. I've done game tests between these laptops. This laptop has about five times the graphics performance of these three laptops. Now, these three laptops will all play League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Minecraft, Rocket League, Dota 2, just fine. It won't do them all necessarily at 100% max detail, but it will play them fine. They're very playable. If those are the kind of games that you want to play, you don't need to spend the money on this. In fact, the 350 machine will do them just fine. Do you want to play Grand Theft Auto V? Do you want to play uh, Dishonored 2? Those games will not play at max detail on this, but they will play. I'm willing to bet Dishonored 2 won't even launch on these computers because they don't have a dedicated graphics chip. They don't have enough VRAM. They don't have any VRAM. They share main system RAM for the graphics chip. So if you're looking for a budget gaming computer and you want better performance, this is the machine to buy. That is a great value for that graphics chip. Now, it is a low-end dedicated graphics chip. Don't get carried away. This is not going to be running all current games at 1080p at 60 frames a second at great detail. But it will play most games at 1080p at low to medium detail at 60 frames a second, whereas most current games won't even launch on these laptops. That's a big difference. So if you're looking for something that will play games, is expandable with both solid state drive and hard drive space, this is the machine to buy bar none. For $550, this is an incredible value for the money. But if you remove the game requirement from the equation, it loses a lot of its point beyond these machines. Want a solid state drive? This is a very nice computer. It's a little less expensive than this one. It's got a little bit faster CPU, 3.1 gigahertz i5. This one has a 2.8 gigahertz i5, the HP. This Acer, also has a 2.8 gigahertz i5. So this is actually the fastest in terms of CPU power in the bunch. If you don't play games and all you're interested in is Windows performance, this is actually the fastest computer here. But if you want to play games, 
than the Acer E15 550 machine is. If you want the least expensive option, don't care about a solid state drive, and you simply want a casual use machine, then the $350 is the deal among the bunch. To be honest, this is kind of the middle child that really doesn't serve a purpose. The HP, perfectly good laptop, does everything it's supposed to do, but it's more expensive than the $350 machine, but doesn't offer a solid state drive. And if you're gonna make that jump, you might as well come up here and get a solid state drive. So I would honestly skip this unless you find a great deal on it. Now, when you check prices using the links in the video description below, all the advice I'm giving is at these prices, 350, 460, 530, and 550. If you find this HP for 400, buy it. It's a deal at that price. Understand that my advice and comments is related to the prices that I am mentioning them at. One final point I'll note, and I've been asked this multiple times, this particular computer comes in an i7 version for $150 more. Do not buy it. It is not worth the money. The i7 version of the Acer Aspire E15 is a two core, four thread chip. It's exactly the same as this, except the clock speed is about 10% faster. It is not a quad core chip, even though it says an i7. Don't spend the $700 on the i7 version of this. Get the 550, it's the deal. So they each serve a purpose. It depends upon the price point. If you want more details on any of the specific machines, check my links in the video description below and check out my links to Amazon and Newegg below as well. I hope this has been helpful to you. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below the video. Questions and comments in the comment section below. And as always, the video description is where all the good stuff is at. All my reviews, all my links to Amazon and Newegg will be down there. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.